Hey, thanks for making it to Veterans Info Tap. I'm glad you made it. Here's the headline, Sinusitis VA Rating. What is the VA disability rating for sinusitis? Good question. Especially if you haven't filed for it, you might think you have it or you do have it. Maybe you are diagnosed for it. Maybe uh, you're not diagnosed for it, but you think you have the symptoms, especially, especially if you served in a presumptive location, meaning that uh, you're on that newly, um, pres- the newly created presumptive list through the PACT Act, right, for the burn pits. So pretty much anywhere uh, over in the Middle East area uh, is going to put you into that bucket of ability to file for a presumptive condition for sinusitis. This is a, a really good one that a lot of people might not think they can get much of a rating for, so why bother? But the reality is is that you can receive a decent rating um, and really, quite frankly, potentially a high value uh, claim, even though I hate saying high value. I, I mostly just wanted to say it because I, I believe that every single rating you have is high value to you. So anyway, with that, let's jump into it. Hit the thumbs up, subscribe, share with a friend, all that good stuff. I really appreciate it. Uh, The two asks, hit the thumbs up, let the video run. Those help push this out uh, to more of us. And remember, look, this might not affect you. Sinusitis might not even be a thing for you, but look, you understanding a little bit makes you dangerous for when you talk to uh, somebody else that you may meet somewhere and you can say, hey, look, did you know that you could X, Y, Z? Get them thinking about it. Uh, You watching helps to push this into our brothers and sisters hands who might be suffering from this and give them a little insight on filing a claim. So with that, thank you so much. If you want to support the channel in other ways, consider being a member. You can do that by going to the homepage. You'll see highlighted members and join button. Thank you so much to all of you. I really appreciate it. Let's jump into it. So the journey for veterans with sinusitis. Sinusitis is a condition that many veterans face and it can significantly impact daily life. The good news is that the VA recognizes sinusitis as a disability. Here's the first little nugget, right? When you hear VA disability, VA disability compensation, oftentimes if you are not already service connected with the VA, you think, well, disability means a physical ailment, period. Not true, right? as in sinusitis or migraines or tinnitus ringing in the ear or the list goes on. So let's move on in here because I can get sidetracked. So sinusitis uh, is recognized as a disability by the VA, which means veterans may be eligible for compensation. Understanding how this works can make a big difference in managing the condition and getting the support needed. So what exactly is sinusitis? It occurs when the tissue lining Uh, your sinuses becomes inflamed and swollen. This inflammation can lead to a host of uncomfortable symptoms, including pressure in the face, neck mucus uh, production, or thick, excuse me, thick mucus production, fever, headaches, and persistent cough. Acute sinusitis often follows a cold and typically resolves within a short period. However, chronic, keyword, chronic, Sinusitis is a different story. It can linger for 12 weeks or longer, making everyday activities uh, a challenge. As one veteran noted, living with sinusitis is like having a constant cloud hanging over you. The VA recognizes both chronic sinusitis and rhinitis. Rhinitis. It's R-H-I-N-I-T-I-S. So anyway, I'm, I drank too much coffee and now I'm all kind of wound out. Anyway. Uh, which is uh, inflammation of the nasal tissue. While rhinitis shares similar symptoms, it originates from the nose rather than the sinuses, which you can be rated for both, by the way. Uh, So uh, it originates from the nose rather than the sinuses. The VA disability rating system takes these conditions into account, ensuring that veterans receive the recognition they deserve for their health issues. Moving on, what veterans need to know about sinusitis. One crucial aspect of receiving a VA disability rating for sinusitis is the connection to your military service. Now, here's a little nugget, and I'm going to also throw, I don't know if they're going to talk about it here, but I'm going to throw it out there. After we're done with this article, I'll jump over to the rating schedule for sinusitis, tell you what the uh, requirements are for each of the rating uh, opportunities within sinusitis. And then the other piece is, is that 
What they're talking about right here, one crucial aspect of receiving a VA disability rating for sinusitis is the connection to military service. There's two ways. You can file for service connection and try to prove the nexus, showing the VA that my sinusitis was uh, uh, manifested or manifested during my time in service or as a result of my service somehow, some way, shape, form, whatever. Or presumptive, right? Presumptive conditions eliminate the need for, a, uh, for the nexus. So if you served in uh, a, a presumptive location uh, in the PACT Act, uh, it's, typically it's going to be all your burn pit stuff, right? So in all the locations in the Middle East uh, during the specific time periods, they will say that sinusitis is a presumptive condition. All right, so now let's move on. So what they're saying here is the, that they want to see that connection to military service. If you served in areas where you were exposed to hazardous materials, such as burn pits, the VA presumes that your sinusitis is related to your service. Exposure to certain toxins can lead to sinusitis and other health problems. The, this presumption can streamline the process for veterans seeking compensation. When it comes to determining your VA disability rating for sinusitis, several factors come into play. These include whether surgical intervention is necessary, how frequently you experience flare-ups that require bed rest or physician care, and the severity of your symptoms as with most most uh, conditions, right? It's also worth noting that you can receive a VA rating for sinusitis alone or in combination with other disabilities such as migraines. Secondary condition, okay? So that's, I love that they threw that in here. That's great. So they did mention headaches up on top, but so if your sinusitis is causing you migraines, well, now you have a secondary condition for migraines and you, you should file for that. If you had sinusitis prior to your military service but found that your time in the military aggravated the condition, you can still receive a rating for that aggravation. One veteran shared, if you had sinusitis before your service and your time in the military aggravated your condition, you can also receive a rating based on that aggravation. And that's true. Typically what you're going to see is anybody who came in on a waiver. You received a waiver for some sort of a ailment, um, and then you, you got into the military, and then if your signs and symptoms and, and problems with that specific condition got worse, the VA kind of prorates it a little bit. Well, you were this bad when you joined, but now you're this bad, so we're going to pay you this. Uh, so moving on, in summary, if you're a veteran struggling with sinusitis, it's essential to understand your rights and the benefits available to you. Filing a claim with the VA could lead to a monthly compensation that helps manage your condition and improve your overall quality of life. Don't hesitate to reach out for assistance. Support is available and you don't have to navigate this journey alone. That concludes it. So they left out what it looks like to get rated for sinusitis. So let's, let's look at that. So the lowest rating for sinusitis is a 0%. And that is detected by x-ray only. So if you get uh, uh, um, diagnosed with sinusitis and it's uh, only detected by x-ray and that's it, uh, you're, you're getting a 0%. In order to get a 10% rating, it says one or two in incapacitating episodes per year of sinusitis requiring prolonged, lasting four to six weeks of antibiotic treatment or three to six non-incapacitating episodes per year of sinusitis characterized by headaches, pain, and uh, I'm not sure, per purulent discharge or crusting. So I'm guessing that's like nasal, nasal uh, drippage. Um, so that's a 10%. 30%, three or more. So they give you options here. Remember, there's incapacitating episodes and then the non-incapacitating episodes. So they give you two options to reach each one of these percentages. So for a 30%, you either have to have three or more incapacitating episodes per year of sinusitis requir requiring prolonged, lasting four to six weeks of antibiotic treatment, or you have more than six non-incapacitating episodes per year of sinusitis characterized by headaches, pain, and purulent discharge or crusting. So 
The interesting thing is, is that in the uh, Code of Federal Regulations rating schedule for sinusitis, under the non-incapacitating episodes portion, it does not specify how long uh, it needs to be incapacitating, right? Was it three days? Was it five days? Was it two days? Was it one day? I don't know, right? So if your doctor and you can articulate your incapacitating episodes for more than six times per year, um, it doesn't seem like you need to have a date range. It just says that you need to have had an incapacitating episode, none, more than six non-incapacitating episodes. Um, so how long are those non-incapacitating episodes, right? It doesn't really say. So you could just have your doctor describe that you've had six or more non-incapacitating episodes per year. Moving on to the next one, 50%. This is the maximum rating for uh, sinusitis following, um, I think it says radical surgery with chronic osteomyelitis. I'm not sure. I, I didn't make it through med school. Um, or near constant sinusitis. So basically, it's just kind of a constant. You just, you're always in that sinusitis kind of situation. Characterized by headaches, pain, and tenderness of affected sinus. And purulent discharge or crusting after repeated surgeries. So you are basically needing to have some surgery um, completed before you can reach that 50 I would say the majority of folks would land in that 30% range if they document their uh, six non-incapacitating episodes or more per year. So with that, thanks so much for watching. I appreciate you. Have a great one. And remember, if we don't take care of each other, something went wrong.